Hello everyone, my name is Garvin, and I said there wouldn't be a video this week because I was doing a book review. Well, I did the book review. Buckle up, kids, because I'm also doing a video, and I'm going to talk about the Magic Law series and its publisher, Brick Cave Media. So, I guess... I lied. While you're recovering from that shock, a quick disclaimer. I know Doc Davis, the writer of the Magic Law series. I know his family... I consider them my friends, and honestly, they're great people. That said, everything I'm going to tell you about this series is my honest and forthright opinion. I just think I should tell you up front if I know the person I'm talking about. So, the Magic Law series. Imagine a fantasy world where the Dark Lord is defeated, the Orc army is broken and driven back, your standard high fantasy story, which has now dropped the curtain and said happily ever after, right? Well, now imagine you've come back a thousand years later. The humans, through systematic and methodical study, have figured out how to mass-produce magic items that everyone can use. So now everyone has a magic uh, mirror that they can contact other magic mirrors with, and it fits in your pocket. There are flying sleds that provide transportation for anyone and everyone with the money to buy one. Swords have been replaced by magic needle throwers that can be enchanted to put people to sleep, set them on fire, or just flat out kill them if you have no sense of the dramatic. It's not a carbon copy of our world, though, using magic as technology. For example, you would find there's no magic internet, which means no magic YouTube. So on this world, you wouldn't have to listen to me prattle about things. Shockingly, a bunch of consumer goods does not make for a utopia. This world is full of simmering racial and class tensions. The most powerful nation is the Commonwealth, a large multiracial state with dwarves, elves, humans, and orcs all living together whether they like it or not. Most of the orcs are immigrants from the Aziri Empire, the orcish home state that was left intact after the wars a thousand years ago or so given their history and the fact that they're immigrants they mostly serve as cheap labor for those magic item factories and other industries that humans dwarves and elves don't want to work in as you can guess there's a lot of anti-orc bigotry running around the elder elves the ones who hold power in elvish society still remember the war from first-hand experience and they're holding a little bit of a grudge for that whole attempted genocide. For that matter, the dwarves are only a generation or two removed from it, so it's still kind of raw for them as well. And I have to admit, this does make a certain degree of sense. Imagine a Nazi Germany that lasted for a hundred years, kept trying to wipe everyone out around it, and you're an immortal Polish person who remembers losing entire generations of children to these bastards, and you have a photographic memory. Now imagine some American who is barely old enough in your society be let out of the house on their own, telling you it's just time to let it go. The series follows Simon Buckley, a human peacekeeper whose job it is to maintain law and order, and who honestly desires to serve justice and make a better society for orcs, humans, dwarves, and elves. For those of you going, that's impossible, I remind you this is a fantasy. So, just enjoy it. Simon is an interesting fellow in that he serves as an example of a multiracial society in of himself. When his human father was murdered by an orc, he was taken in by a dwarven family and adopted. They raised him with care and love, and Simon speaks and acts at times more like a dwarf than a human as a result. At the same time, he has this insistence that people shouldn't be judged by their race, but by their character, and that orcs deserve all the rights and considerations that other people get, no matter what happened a thousand years ago. And because he's a main character, he's also dating an elf. I do want to touch on that relationship because it's incredibly well done, and it's interesting that the elf girl in question, Sylvie, 
is shown as being willing to move faster than Simon is, but she also works hard to make sure he never feels pressured by her. Uh, I chalk this up to the fact that if you've been alive for a hundred years, you likely have a good sense of what you like and know what you're looking for, and no reason to, you know, dance around that. From her perspective, there's also probably a fear of losing time with Simon, because, well, he could drop dead any decade now, and at that point, he's gone forever. So, I can see her being, let's get a move on here, you know? But I also want to discuss the books. First is Platinum Magic, where the action kicks off with our brave hero getting a tip about a bomb factory hidden in a suburban home. And that leads him into a secret plot involving magic that no one really knows about and weapons no one is prepared to counter. There's blood magic and worse has estranged elvish royals get involved and even weirder things complicate this investigation as Simon tries to figure out just what the heck is going on here and why this is happening. I won't spoil the book, but Dr. Davis manages to introduce us to this whole new world very effectively while telling a great, fun, fast-paced story. Next up is book two called Gold Magic. The capital city is a powder keg, has a pair of orc gangs inch closer and closer to open warfare on the streets. In the midst of this, a group of abandoned orc children are found, killed in a way that suggests the use of illegal blood magic, and that starts all sorts of accusations flying back and forth between orc gangs and other races and classes. Has resentments along racial lines start to boil up. Things are also complicated by grudges and resentments and class feuds within orcish society itself, creating battle lines within battle lines. On top of this, Simon has to deal with problems within his own department and a jurisdictional dispute with the officer in charge of the area the crimes took place in. Simon needs to solve this crime before the streets explode into violence that could kill hundreds of innocents, and make sure justice is done, but at what cost? Silver Magic is the latest book in the series, and I'm not going to talk too much about it, because I did just write a full-blown review of the book, and I want you to click on the link below and read it. Reading won't hurt you, I promise. If any of these books caught your interest, or if the world itself sounds cool, I'm going to encourage you to click the link in the description to Brick Cave Media, the publisher of this fine series, and many other works by other fine authors. They're a small independent outfit trying to make sure good writers can catch a break, so please, give them at least a look, and if you pick up something, tell them I sent you. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it informative. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, or even subscribe, as all of these help in my struggle against the Dread Lord algorithm. Terror be on his name. If you like to support this channel in other ways, consider joining the ranks of my ever-wise patrons, whose votes decide future content, and you can vote for as little as a dollar a month. And if you want to see me cover more independent authors, that's a great place to start. Speaking of, special thanks to Big Steve, our biggest patron supporter. As always, man, thank you. I appreciate it. Next week is just a video, and it's going to be our second creature feature video, and I hope you'll be there. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and of course, keep reading.